Hello. Welcome back. Of course, as you know, I am the hat. Oh, for sure. I am back as well. My name is Blue Monday, but you can just call me Blue. <laughs> Recently, Blue and I found out that two of our friends became engaged. Engaged to be married. Marriage. The union of two hearts. The joining of two souls and an excuse for all those poor relatives to come and eat up all the food. Ah yes, especially if your relatives are among the lazy, no-job type. Uh, who can resist free food at the wedding, huh? Yes. Yes, free food. But it isn't just relatives. It's also some friends that are without work, can't afford to cook themselves a cuisine. So they come to special occasions, because special occasions mean free food. And let's not forget, free booze as well, including among the booze, that little square-shaped box containing the substance called red wine, and the whiskey and the brandy and the beer, and so on, and the shots, the springbok, the sex on the beach, the volcano, the last dive, and so on and so forth. And not to forget the woman's revenge. Oy. I had one of those, and my mouth tasted like I ate a whole roll of toilet paper. It was really disgusting. And imagine, with all those relatives, each and every member finally together, meeting each other for the first time, and with all those free food, and especially the free booze, up for grabs, one can only guess how the rest of the night will turn out, when each relative has one, had one too many. But we all know that red substance called red wine what it can do. I think I've ever I've actually covered that before. I have the three symptoms of alcohol. First comes the love, then comes the swearing, then comes the aggression, and then party over. Everyone goes home in a bad mood, hating each other. Waking up the next morning not remembering anything. Most of the men wake up not rem remembering what happened to them two front teeth. Had they even sound right? I don't think so. No, Blue, it's actually correct. But since we all know the, uh, the first two symptoms, let's skip over to the third, aggression. One thing alcohol, all flavors of alcohol have caused, aggression. The urge to fight, the urge to display your dominance, like a dog looking to lift his leg at every bush to mark its territory. At a, first, starting with the men, as soon as they reach the aggressive stage, they become very, how do I put it, worked up. They're looking, itching for a fight. And in the case of their relatives, they go to each other, start bringing up old issues, that weren't resolved in the past. They even brought a, bring up issues that they never knew they had. Can you imagine? Old issues you never knew existed suddenly coming to the forefront. Hey, not only that, I think there was a fourth symptom here you forgot to mention. The fact that oh, some straight men become gay and some st a gay men become straight. Uh, is that even a symptom or just an after effect? That could be a bit of both. But the one thing, when the men have re reached the aggressive stage of their drinking, is when they suddenly look like they're embracing, but they're actually getting ready, ready to fight. But Observing from a distance, it looks rather strange. 
I've actually seen this with a couple of drunk people, men mostly. What they do is caress each other's faces and bodies, shoulders, butts, legs. I don't know about that part. And so on. And otherwise looking like they're about to engage in a sleazy version of the French kiss. If the French kiss is looking sleazy, it means you're doing it in a tasteful manner. And in sometimes in these situations, the fight might never happen. And then when the fight does happen and the punches flow, and you end up landing a punch in the gut, suddenly the internal party that t took place in the internal system suddenly decides it wants to end and it wants to sneak out either out the front or the back. And every man heads for the lawn because the bathrooms are outside. And at which point every man who came for, for the free booze goes out to the lawn, gets on the knees, and leaves all those expensive free booze on the lawn. <laughs> and the even funnier thing is that the men stay on the knees look at the whatever it is, and thinks to themselves they don't re ever remember having the cornflakes for either breakfast, lunch, or dinner. But let us not forget the women, when they reach the aggressive stage, and they love to indulge in that substance called red wine that gives them that extra wisdom and causes them to develop that evil laugh, the swearing. But when they reach that ag aggressive stage, they demonstrate an uncanny ability, an ability to find everything breakable and throw them at each other. And you name it, of all the things on the table, plastic plates, forks, knives, tablecloths, steel cutlery, the first thing they grab are either the wine glasses or the flower pots. Actually, when the women reach a crisis of stage, it can be quite entertaining because it's like uh, team wine glass versus the team flower pot and they throw them at each other, but no one team actually grabs the same things. They just all go for the wine glass and flower pots, so it makes it difficult to tell who's on whose team. <laughs> Man, the, what booze can do to a person is, uh, can sometimes be pain in the ass, but sometimes be very entertaining. And then comes the bride and groom. The bride, after all the fighting and all between the relatives, and the other friends. The bride is usually distraught. Her special night now ruined. And the groom is tasked with the responsibility of trying to cheer her up. Because if he doesn't, he won't get lucky tonight. And he, and he only has family members to blame for that. Because, uh, because they only came to indulge in the free food and the free booze, and ended up overindulging. Therefore, the groom's libido is left standing at the altar. Well, luckily, our friends have nothing to worry about, because the people we will be inviting know how to behave themselves and actually come for the special occasion and not just the free food and booze, you see. Unless... They invite the Amish twins. Ah, yes. The Amish twins. Who are the Amish twins? I have no idea. I've only heard about them. It's not as if these people are my relatives. I thought one of them was your relative. You know, the little tall one with his spiky hair. He has the puffy cheeks and the... Uh, Oh, he's developing the good-looking beer, beer belly to protect his six-pack. 
Actually, he's the cousin of the guy who came up with the show. All right. But if he's family of him, doesn't that make him family of us? Sort of. And in closing, we would just like to say congratulations to our friends for getting engaged. We hope you have a long and happy life together. And if anyone asks, you didn't see my face. Yes, and from me as well, congratulations to you. And uh, may there be many happy times ahead. Viva la wedding.